you're a web developer who's just been tasked with building a new web app for a client. Their marketing team tells you that they know and love WordPress. It's a trusted, rock-solid CMS that powers over 40% of the web, and it provides them with the editorial workflows and content creation experience that their team relies heavily on and wants to keep. You dig in and learn a bit more about the project requirements. Two things in particular pique your interest. One, the need to support multiple clients. You learn from your discussions that after the web app is launched, the client also plans to launch iOS and Android apps. So that means the web client, iOS client, and Android client all ultimately need to be able to source their data from the same WordPress backend. Two, a persistent podcast player. The client tells you that they want to have a fixed podcast player at the bottom of the page. Site visitors should be able to start playing a podcast episode and then navigate around the rest of the site with uninterrupted audio playback. You take a step back to consider all of this. Using WordPress as a traditional monolithic CMS would certainly allow the marketing team to continue using their preferred platform. However, that would make it difficult and cumbersome for the WordPress backend to be able to serve up the platform agnostic JSON data it needs to to serve the iOS and Android apps. Further, it would also be problematic for the persistent podcast player feature, since out of the box, traditional WordPress performs a full page reload every time the user navigates to a different page. So the pl audio playback would then be interrupted. You find yourself wishing you could use something like SvelteKit, a single page app framework that makes persisting elements across route changes nearly effortless, among many other benefits. So what do you do? How do you proceed with this project? I'm Kellen Mace from the developer relations team at WP Engine, and I'm here to tell you that this time around, you can have your cake and eat it too. For the rest of this talk, we'll build out a proof of concept app to accomplish these goals. We'll use WordPress as a headless CMS and pair it with a SvelteKit front end. By using this decoupled architecture, we'll see that we're able to accomplish our goals of supporting multiple clients, as well as having a persistent podcast player that has uninterrupted audio playback across route changes. Let's start by setting up our WordPress backend. Here, I'm using a free app called Local to create a local uh, WordPress site for me to work with. And you can see I have it running at sveltsummit.local. And here's that site in a browser. You can see here that I'm um, at the WordPress admin screen. And uh, here I've created a few dummy blog posts just so we have some data to work with. Next, let's turn our WordPress backend into a GraphQL server using the WP GraphQL plugin. So I'll head over to plugins. We'll go to add new, and then I'll search for WP GraphQL. We'll find that plugin on the list and click install now. And then once it's been installed, we can go ahead and click the activate button. Now that WP GraphQL is activated, I can head over here to GraphQL and then go to settings. And at the top of this page, we can see what our GraphQL endpoint is. So we'll need that in just a moment here. Let's turn our attention now to our SvelteKit app. So I went ahead and ran um, npm init svelte at next and just gave my app a name. Uh, that's all I've done so far. This is just a, a skeleton code base at this point. So the first step we need to do is link up our front end to our back end using that GraphQL endpoint. So how we'll do that is we'll create a new file called .env.local. And inside of that, we need to define an environment variable. So we'll make it uh, vite public WordPress API URL, just like that. And then we'll head back to WordPress and we'll copy this GraphQL endpoint. So I'll go to copy link address and we'll paste that in there. So I'll hit save and this is the endpoint our front end app will use to fire off its GraphQL requests. I also have a completed version of this app here. Um, so as we go, we'll copy and paste some things back and forth and then I'll explain it each step of the way. Uh, for now, we'll just copy a few things over. So one is this layout CSS file. It just has some global styles in it. Um, that one will stick in our source directory to give us a bit of a head start there. And we'll also take a look at um, this uh, layout file as well. So I'll copy that, and then we'll put that inside of our routes directory. 
So for now, we don't have this podcast player. We'll do that later. Uh, for now, we'll just start with this. So in our application, we'll have um, the CSS file with our global styles being pulled in and um, just a you know main element that wraps our app and gives it a little uh, padding and margin and so on. Next, let's see how we can actually pull data out of WordPress and display it on a blog page. So inside of routes, we'll create a new file and that'll be blog slash index.svelte. So let's create that and for now, uh, we'll just make sure we have a page rendering. So let's check out this page in our front end app now. So I'll head to localhost 3000 and we should be able to hit our blog route. Next, let's see how we can query our WordPress backend to get a list of posts and then render those on the page. Uh, in our front end app, we have uh, this completed file here and I'll just steal a few things from this. So ultimately we're, what we're going to render on the page, on our blog page is this. So we'll still have our heading, but then we'll say if we have posts, loop over those and display you know, list items, otherwise say no posts found. And for now, because we don't have a post card component, uh, let's go ahead and just render a paragraph and we'll say post.title. Um, if you head over to the SvelteKit docs, uh, you can see that there is a load function that SvelteKit provides where you can do uh, any data fetching that you need. So this is exactly what we need. Um, I'll go ahead and copy just the script tag and then our load function will grab from our uh, completed app to save a little bit of time. So here I am with my script tag and then in our completed app, here's what the load function is going to look like. So I'll copy that and let's talk through it. All right, so here's the load function that we're um, exporting. You can see it uh, receives you know, fetch and it, um, it uses the fetch API and it sends a request to our uh, WordPress API URL. Uh, it's a post request and the type is application JSON. Then we're passing into it the query uh, that we would like to run here. So we need to define what that is above. We're gonna have const um, query equals some string here. So we need to determine you know, what that needs to look like and then fire off this request. Um, for a production application, you, know, you might wanna consider using a library here uh, instead of just a straight fetch call. So you could use like Urkel or Apollo client or um, Svelte query, you know, one, one of those libraries. Uh, for our app though, just using fetch for our uh, proof of concept is going to work great. All right, so let's say we've made it this far and now we need to figure out what actual, actual query uh, do we need to fire off to our WordPress backend. And thankfully, GraphQL and WP GraphQL specifically have really great um, tooling around this. So if we head back to the WordPress admin now and we go to GraphQL and then graphical IDE, here you can see that WP GraphQL provides this embedded graphical instance. And from here you can uh, explore the uh, GraphQL data graph and uh, compose your queries very easily. So it comes with this explorer here on the side where you know if you want to drill down to like posts and then uh, the nodes of each post and get you know the date or whatever other data, you can see as I check these boxes, it composes the query for me over here. So then when I hit the play button to execute this, I see what the result would be, you know, if my front end SvelteKit app were to fire off the same query. So this is huge. This is super, you know, powerful and makes composing your queries very easy. Um, another trick you can do is if you're inside of, if you're nested inside of the query here, you can hit uh, control space to get autocomplete as well and see, you know, what's, what's available. Uh, so at this point, you know, you would uh, explore the data graph and build up your query and think about what your pages need to look like. Um, for us, we'll, we'll uh, skip ahead to the finished result. So this is the query that we would have composed here in the WordPress admin. Uh, so you can see it is called get posts and then we're saying we want to get the blog posts and then for each of those nodes, um, we want this data back. So if I were to fire that off, Here's the result. So this is what our front end SvelteKit app will receive and what we need to use to you know, render these on the list. So armed with that knowledge, uh, let's go ahead and copy you know, this whole query right here that we've built up and we'll head over to our app and that's what we're gonna stick inside of uh, this string here. All right, so let's test this out and uh, see if we can get it working. So we have our load function um, that's running this and it is going to uh, fetch the data and then when the data comes back, assuming the response is okay, It'll pull out the blog post and then pass through those through as a prop 
uh, to our component. But our component can't use that data just yet because we need to export posts so that it's usable by our component. Um, so let's flip back to our finished product and we'll see further down what that looks like. So here we just have um, this other script tag below the first one and we'll get rid of um, we'll comment out postcard just for now and just leave posts here. All right, so here in the browser, um, we were successful. You can see we're getting back uh, the post titles and we're able to render those on a list. So this is great as a starting point. You can see now our front end Svelkit app is hooked up to the WordPress backend and is able to um, pull out you know, data via uh, GraphQL. So from here, um, we can display you know, uh, more data about our blog posts. So to do that, we'll use this post card component and then that's the thing that we're gonna render in this place. So I'll say post card is there and then uh, the prop it expects is post, just like that. This post card component will steal from our finished product. Um, so it's this one, so I'll copy that. And then we'll create inside of source a components directory and then inside of that uh, we'll paste that in. Um, so that component is pretty simple, this post card, there's not a whole lot to it, it just receives you know, the post um, as a prop here and renders an article tag with you know, some info uh, about the post inside of it and it has some styles at the bottom. And this is what it looks like in the browser. Uh, so this is pretty cool, you can see that we have um, our blog post you know, cards being displayed here. So we have the featured image, title, and then the excerpt um, for each of our three blog posts and these are linked as well. So if I click on this, it'll send me to slash blog slash whatever the slug is uh, for that blog post, but we haven't implemented that uh, just yet. So let's do that next. This will be our single blog post page. So to do that, um, I'll close out those files and we'll take a look at our completed app and we'll look at blog and then this slug.svelte. Um, so this will be a, a dynamic route for us. So let's create the same uh, in our new application. So in blog, we'll do new file slug .svelte, just like that. Now inside of this, um, let's figure out what we're going to need. So we'll do some data fetching, just like we saw last time. So let's um, you know, prepare for that. We'll have this and then our closing script tag. All right, and uh, we'll need to define our query. All right, and we'll do some uh, very similar data fetching to what we did in the last file where we'll use the load function uh, and then you know, the fetch API just to send um, through our query. Uh, this time it's going to be different in one way and that is uh, we need to send through a variable though to our GraphQL query. So let's uh, inspect that a little bit. So inside of our load function here, um, we are still passing in the query as we were uh, in our previous example, but this time we have this extra uh, variables object that we're passing along. So we're saying, here's the query I want you to run and you know it, it is going to expect a variable called slug and here's the thing to use uh, for that variable. And you can see here that we're um, uh, drilling down to page.params.slug. So that'll be our you know, dynamic route here. Whatever slug is in the URL, that will be passed through and used when this query is run. All right, and then from there, we're saying if you know, the response is okay, um, pull out the post you know, data that was received and then uh, pass that through as a prop. And just like last time, uh, we need to make sure we um, export that from our file. So we'll need to do this. All right, so we'll export that. Um, so we have it available to us to, in our component. And I have a few other helper, I have a little helper function to format our date. And uh, this code just to pull out a list of our, the categories that the blog post might have. Below that, we're ready to have our HTML then. Um, so this is nothing to write home about. Uh, again, it'll be pretty straightforward. So we'll have a link at the top to go back to the main blog post page if the user wants to. Uh, and then we'll just have an article tag with you know, the info about uh, this single blog post that the person is viewing. And we'll give that some style as well. There we go. So at this point we have all of our markup, all of our styles accounted for, but we still you know, need to um, build up this query at this point to fetch the data for our individual blog post. 
Um, so at this point, you know, I would head back to uh, the graphical IDE, and instead of the get post query here, um, I would, you know, uh, do another query for an individual post, and then compose uh, my query here until I'm getting, you know, the data back uh, that I expect. So to um, get a bit of a head start, though, we can steal uh, the finished query from our um, completed app. So I'll go ahead and copy this, and then we'll just take a look at what that looks like here. All right, so this is um, different in one uh, noteworthy way, and that is, like I said, it expects a slug argument. So this is what that syntax looks like. You say, we're expecting a slug, and the type uh, is ID, um, and then we're passing that through and telling it the type of this ID we're providing is a slug, because there are some other identifiers you could use to identify a blog post, such as its you know, ID in the database. But in this case, we're saying the type of ID um, we're passing through is a slug. So we'll try to locate it based on that. Um, if I try to fire this off, it will crash and burn because I haven't provided that slug variable. So down here, let's actually do that. I'll, um, I'll open up the query variables section and I'll say, here's the slug. And we're passing through um, one of the post slugs. So let's figure out what one of those is. So I head to one of my posts and here it is, the URL slug. I'll copy that. And then in my query variable, that's the thing that will pass through as the slug. So if we try to execute that now, shazam, there we go. So we get our post back and then date, title, content, um, all the info that we want about this individual blog post. So this um, is basically what, what we're going to do in our SvelteKit app. So we have this identical query. So I'll copy that and we will make that the query that we're going to run. So I'll head back to our front end app and let's just start out at the slash blog page again. So here's our first blog post and I'll try to click through to it. And there we go, uh, seems to be working. So I have my you know, link back to the blog post page and I have <clears throat> the featured image, the title, uh, the author and date, you know, they're nicely formatted, the content of our blog post, and then uh, the list of categories. So I think we're doing great here. Uh, we've seen in our web client how we can you know, query for data from our WordPress backend and then create um, our blog post list page as well as individual blog post pages. Um, but have we accomplished our goal of having a platform agnostic you know, GraphQL um, server that can be used for our web client and also iOS and Android? So one way to test that would be to use a standalone uh, version of graphical. So this one is embedded into WordPress right here. Um, you can, you know, we can uh, simulate uh, having other clients just by having like a standalone graphical app just like that. So you can imagine this is like the iOS app or Android app. If one of those sends a request to our slash GraphQL endpoint and requests, you know, some data like this, then we can fire that off here. And we can see that they would get structured JSON data back just like our web client does. Um, so this is great for, you know, consistency, right? Anything, any tweaks that you make to the GraphQL schema to serve the purposes of your web client, that would, that would also benefit any other clients, iOS, Android, desktop, or whatever else. Um, so we've met that requirement now. We have, you know, our uh, data being, you know, sent through to our web client and also any other, you know, clients that I uh, need to consume this in the future. Our one last requirement for this project was to have the persistent uh, podcast player. And with SvelteKit being a single page app framework, that'll be pretty uh, effortless for us to implement. So let's see how we can do that now. Um, back in our code base, I will, I'll, I'll take a look at the um, completed project and we'll see that, that uh, we have this podcast player component. So I'll copy that and we'll paste it into our project and you know, explain uh, what that is. So here's podcast player. You can see it's pretty darn simple. I just have a wrapper div here with an iframe inside that's going to pull in um, this you know podcast player from this uh, buzzsprout.com site. And then below, I just have some styles so that that uh, stays fixed at the bottom of the page. Um, so now that we have that player, we can actually you know render it somewhere in our app. Um, so seeing as how we want this to you know persist across uh, route changes, um, one place we could add that is into in our layout for our app here. Um, so we'll go ahead and open this layout in our completed app and do the same thing. So we'll go ahead and import 
this podcast player component, and then we'll render that out right below um, the main tag of our app here. So I'll save that file. And now you can see what's happened here. So if we head back to the browser, uh, it seems to be working just great. Now we have our embedded player uh, down here. So I can start playing an episode like, uh, just like this paste the and browse around the site as though I was a user. I can head back to the blog list page. Uh, I can you know find another uh, post that's interesting, click through to that and so on. And all the while have um, uninterrupted audio playback. So with that, we'll wrap things up. I hope this talk gave you a really good sense of when it might make sense to use WordPress as a headless CMS and pair it with a SvelteKit front end and some of the problems that that decoupled architecture can help solve. Thank you so much for watching.